Welcome to the JD Custom Love Gear, ladies and gentlemen. This is a segment of our JD Custom Jam Jar. And uh, here we're going to talk to Dino Portrita about his love for the guitar. Dino, welcome. Awesome. Thank How you are you, much. my friend? I'm great. Good, you? thank you. Good, thank you. So now, Dino, why, why the guitar? I love it. Uh, simply, I don't know. It, it was, a, it was a, one of five to six instruments that grabbed me the most. It was the thing I heard first in most music I listened to as a child. And I wanted to know more. I still want to know more. And as much as I put in, the guitar will give out. And I just love progression. I love to learn. And this is the perfect platform. I think you've done so well choosing this over the drums. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh... Debatable, debatable, debatable. <laughs> well, you know, I also started with the drums, so yeah. I, c I can understand, uh, you know, your, your feel for... Nobody wants us anymore. Drums. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't buy a pizza, so we had to take sure. up six strings there. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. So, do you know, what do you need from your guitar? Mm. It needs to sing. It needs to... It's, it's basically a microphone for the voice I'm portraying. So um, that comes down to my technique, to how the guitar feels, to how much it weighs, how it looks. Everything about a guitar needs to speak my voice, basically. And I've got quite a bit to say. So Let's hear it. That's pretty much. Well, start with the volume. <laughs> I don't know, what do you want me to do? <laughs> so now, I know that you play, you know, both acoustic and electric, and the difference between the two in your, in your technique is worlds apart. Yes. So, the action that you need from your electric compared to the acoustic guitar, what is your feel on that? Action, you know, look, growing up playing on nylon strings and steel strings with not much of a setup done, um, I kind of slayed my fingers um, and my muscle memory and every muscle in my hands to to get used to the, the gruffer, the harder feeling, you know, type of guitars. But since coming to you guys, um, having my guitars set up in a certain way, um, and I speculate, you guys know how finicky I can get with, with setups and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people seem to agree, the players as well, they seem to agree that the kind of setups I get and the tension I have on my strings and all that kind of stuff suit my playing. Is because I'm quite an aggressive picker, quite an aggressive player, and I go through strings like anything, like you guys know. I'm, I'm, every week is a new set of strings. That's it. No thin gauges and no coated. Thin, yeah, no, no terribly thin gauges and coated. That's exactly how it is. And double wound. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. So now, do you know what tip and trick can you share with us that has made you a better guitarist? Or what was the change that happened with your technique? I would say something that helped my playing within the last maybe five, six years is control of volume, not so much swells and technically, but the contrast in volume to create mood. So depending on what kind of you know, rig you're using, depending on how high gain your guitar is or your effects are, whatever the case is, there's slight differences in style that you can take. So for example, um <laughs> Stuff like that. It's just the, you know, the, con the, the different contrast between how soft you want something to create a mood. For me, it's all about emotion. It's all about mood. And what a perfect way to learn as a youngster is if your concept of music is mood. Not just jamming out. I mean, it was never my dream to be a full-on rock star, you know, Green Day vibe, full-out performance. I, I was worried about this first. And creating a tone in these two hands is, for me, the first and foremost, most important thing. Mm. Um, understanding your instrument before you get technical, before you get hooked up with the proper rig and you get you know the most extensive gear you can possibly find to perfect your fingers and create something first that to me is probably the trick thank you for sharing that you know awesome. that's awesome and now what is the mental challenge that you've overcome that has made you a better musician 
I can say not so much a better musician, but the the groundbreaking happening uh, to better me as a I mean learning learning instruments from a young age when I was about eleven years old. My grand had this neighbor um, who had in his collection he had about four hundred and fifty guitars and at least two hundred of them he made himself. So he sure. had this huge w- uh, warehouse in um, on the south coast where he built guitars, all that kind of stuff. And me being intrigued with instruments and guitars was always pestering him. And he saw nothing of me but just a little idiot that came on, you know, kept on bugging over his counter. So um, at that point, I'd already been playing a bit of Kansas, you know, all the good old folk stuff that I'd really enjoyed, you know, once I got my picking up to scratch. Uh, Kansas, Crosby, Stills and Nash, Eagles, The Beatles, um, anything to do with some good picking. And when he said to me, if you can learn, if you can bloody learn Stay Away to Heaven from Zeppelin, I'll build you your own guitar. I'll never forget. Proper. And from beginning to end. From beginning to end. And I thought, you know what? Because many people know the intro. Yeah. No, Playing no, many, people, yeah, many is, people know the intro. Is the real yeah, challenge. Yeah. They don't. Yeah. I everything, can't do it. <laughs> everything in between emotionally and tonally and all that kind of stuff, people still slaughter to this day. And. I mean, I've got a half sleeve tattoo of Stay With A Heaven on my arm as a, a reminder, as a brand to, at 11 years old, then went home back to Joburg from ho- being on holiday in, in uh, KZN, picking up that, with the action this high off the fretboard and starting to learn a song I've never, from a band I'd never heard in my entire life. Zeppelin and all the classic rock only came when I was about 12, 13. At that point, I was still playing old folk classics. So... Being introduced to Zeppelin in a way of a challenge was a very good thing for me. And it took me about a year and a half of constant playing, constant trying to figure out the chords, not even having any muscle memory enough to, I was still barring things with my thumb and all that kind of stuff from the acoustic playing to everything, to the solo, to the vocals, to everything. I mean, I've been singing for a long time and, you know. And when I got back and he told me to pick a guitar in the workshop for him so I could now play the song. I then played it for him and his eyes stood like this and I said, we had a deal. And he said, I'm not building you a little guitar, you're a little idiot. So I said, wow, broke my freaking heart. But I said, you know, what has come from this? I'm 11 years old. I should not be listening to that music. I can now play, um, if not their, their soundtracks, Led Zeppelin's 100% hit maker. And I've been doing that song in every gig that I play, obviously apart from Barnyard, at every gig that I play, I do that song in, as a, a reminder to me um, that that's the point where I got, I got frustrated with the idea of being let down and being promised something and I've, I've, I've worked towards something and I didn't get it now. It's like taking candy from a baby. But I thought, now that I can play this, what's my next challenge? Because that only took a year and a half. I'm pretty sure everything else might seem a little easier from here on, from a young age, without any lessons. And then came the riffing, then came Alan Holdsworth, then came different styles, different guitarists, different genres completely, pop playing, funk playing. And everything got a little easier from there because I had now known how hard it was to learn Stay With Heaven at 11. Sure. And I think out of that big disappointments, you managed to gain a lot of wealth in your playing and a yes, lot of wealth. That same dude saw me at a barnyard show my second year watching me do, I think it was, I can't remember, it must have been ACDC or Sweet Child of Mine or something like that. And you're bloody brilliant if I had known. And I said, well, now you know. But um, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, you know what? I took more, I took more from that experience than I could have possibly gained in a shitty guitar. And now you earn some beautiful pieces. No, and some, some gorgeous pieces, yeah. Thank you for customizing them. That's why they're gorgeous. Um, they suit me. That's what I love about my instruments is they suit me. And this, this has been my, my workhorse for a long, long time. And I don't think I'll stop customizing it. I don't think I'll stop, you know, doing my thing on this guitar. It'll be, it'll, it's my red special. It's my blackie. Or it's whatever the you extension call it. of your nervous system. Yes, basically. It's an appendage, but a useful one. So... Nice. Mm. Dino, thank you for sharing all these tips and tricks with us. Awesome, thank you. And thank you for spending time with us in the workshop. Thank you. And uh, for opening been up a long this, time coming. this beautiful been... world of guitar. Yes, thank you. Yeah. It's been a long time coming. I'm glad I've finally done it now. 
I'm good enough now. <laughs> nice, Dino. Awesome. Thank, thank you for you your time. Much. I really appreciate it. it. Thank you. Nice.